Dr. John Glaze, a Ph.D. in immunology, an M.D. with a specialization in virology, he was qualified to serve in any biolab on the planet and at any pharmaceutical company's R&D. What he wasn't qualified for? Fighting a goddamned oil monster. When the man called Chuckles pelted out of the foyer and to the emergency exit, his already overloaded mind did what it always did. It turned over the problem, which, of course, led to the first rule of scientific curiosity, observation. Instead of following the panic wave and listening to the alarm bells going off in the back of his mind, he walked toward the elevator bank. The sizzling and crackling sounds barely registered in his forebrain. They were just more noise lost in the panicked yelling and screaming. His protective suit crinkled with each step. Somewhere in the universe, someone was screaming his name. The sound was coming through the radio, but it was just static compared to the maelstrom in his mind. The elevator bank came more into view. Something black slammed into the tiled floor. John stopped in mid-step. An obsidian, multi-jointed leg with a three-taloned claw crunched as it took weight. He took a step backward. The sizzling sound faded into nothing, but the crackling sound intensified. His brain finally started to process it. The leg moved. Another leg appeared. And another and another. John's mouth opened in an O. His eyes widened. He stared at the thing in the elevator bank. The word black was incapable of describing its color. Supported by seven legs, a ragged, oval-shaped torso came into view. Eye stalks rose from its top. The blacker-than-black orbs at the end of the stalks stared at him with alien malevolence. He took another step back as tentacles sprouted from its sides. A serrated maw opened in its middle. The creature, silent except for the crackling as more tentacles burst from its middle, moved toward him. Its taloned feet clicked on the tile floor. The ancient reptilian part of his brain screamed in terror. More adrenaline rushed into his bloodstream. John finally realized something. He needed to run away but his feet remained firmly planted on the floor as the creature approached him. The monster's open maw clicked open and closed in a death metal rhythm. John tried to scream, but there was no air in his lungs. His vocal cords, like the rest of his body, were frozen in place. The thing extended its legs and rose to its full height. John craned his neck upward. The three-meter-tall thing loomed over him, its mouth nearly level with his head. He managed another step backward before the tentacles streamed out past him and then met behind his back. The creature's mouth puckered from the slick, fluid torso. Jagged black spikes jutted forward. John fell backwards. The tentacles behind retracted. A tremendous force slammed into his spine. The smell of burning fabric hit his nostrils just before he saw one of the tentacles bursting from his chest. A gout of blood jetted into the thing's mouth. John screamed in pain and raised his eyes. The thing's mouth was darker than anything he'd ever dreamed possible. His eyes wide with pain and wonder reflected nothing but the absence of light. When the thing dragged him into its crunching maw, the pain was bright but brief. Metal fasteners, the innards of his radio, and fillings pattered to the floor. When the thing attacked Glaze, he'd been frozen in place. When the man's body dissolved into its maw, Jacob's brain finally kicked into gear. He could run. He could fight. Unfortunately, he tried to do both. He skinned the Glock from its holster and backed away from the creature. He jerked the trigger. The concussion in the closed space instantly deafened him. From five meters away, every bullet hit the nightmare. An impossibly sharp, hooked tentacle twitched as its end disappeared. The next round went through the creature's middle and into the wall. Another round severed an eye stalk. The rest of the bullets missed the solid protrusions. Another eye stalk popped out. The severed tentacle crackled as it lengthened and a new, sharper hook appeared. He was still walking backwards when he hit the wall. The creature gathered itself, and then it charged. Jacob's finger kept pulling the trigger, but the only sounds in the foyer were the clicking of the thing's taloned feet on the floor. No more rounds, 
no more weapons. The creature opened its maw, and then it was on him. She watched John walking toward the elevator bank. Dr. Melanie Hoyt screamed for him to stop, but he kept going forward. She moved to restrain him and then stopped in her tracks. A black spidery leg came into view and her resolve shattered. Dr. Hoyt turned and ran as fast as the suit would allow. She kept screaming Glaze's name and hoped he was following, but didn't turn around to look. Whatever the thing in the elevator bank was, she didn't want to know. She didn't want to know anything more about possible infections or quarantines. She just wanted the hell away from it. They had to let the world know. They had to inform FEMA. They had to... The emergency door was swinging back on its hinges. She slammed into it, and it opened back up. The latch caught a loose fold of her suit. Melanie came to a dead stop as the tough fabric held her fast. Screaming, she grabbed the suit with her hands and pulled. The strong Tyvek fibers resisted at first and then started to part. Air rushed out of the suit. She jerked her arms as hard as she could, and the suit finally came free. She twirled around, and her eyes caught sight of the horror walking out of the elevator bank toward her partner. As its tentacles rushed forward and through John's torso, one of its eye stalks craned toward her. Melanie screamed and slammed the door behind her. Someone was shooting in the foyer and screaming. She had to get out of here. The suit's boots were hardly the best for running, let alone upstairs. She more waddled than ran up the metal and concrete. When she reached the first landing, she peered down at the door. She could see movement through the pane of shatterproof glass inset into the door. The thing was there, waiting. She didn't know if it could get into the stairwell and didn't want to stick around to find out. She continued up the stairs and came to the fire door. Her hand scrabbled at the door handle. She pulled, but nothing happened. The door was locked. She screamed and banged her hands on the door. It was like punching stone, but she barely felt the pain in her knuckles. They weren't going to let her in. They were just going to leave her for that thing. She could hear it down there, smashing into the door. She was their escape plan. It would break through the door, through the walls, and climb the steps on its taloned feet to pierce her with its hooked tentacles until its impossibly black teeth crunched her. The door opened and nearly knocked her down the stairs. A hand reached through and grabbed her arm. She fell through the doorway and crumpled into a heap on the bare floor. She looked up into Mike's bright eyes. He looked scared to death. She knew how he felt. She turned toward the door. It was closed up tight. A hand touched her shoulder and she screamed. She whirled around. Mike raised his hands. You okay? He asked. Melanie shivered as she tried to get hold of herself. Yes, she managed to say. He offered his hand and she let him help her to her feet. Let's go, he said and pointed down the hallway. She blinked at him. With a frustrated sigh, he grabbed her hand and pulled her. A moment later, they were both running. They stopped in the middle of the hall. Mike was out of breath. No matter how much time you spent in the damned gym running for your life took it out of you, and dragging Hoyt's stunned weight hadn't helped. Hands on his knees, he couldn't help but smile as he dragged in deep breaths. He'd have to talk to his trainer. He was obviously not getting the proper exercise for life-threatening situations. Kate leaned up against the wall near the sky bridge. Her arms circled around Maeve's neck. The girl's left arm hung limply at her side. Tears of pain and fear had stained her face. Mike knew how she felt. Chuckles looked ready to pass out. And then he did something Mike didn't think possible. He pulled a cigarette from his front pocket and lit it. That's better, he wheezed. You have to be kidding me, Mike panted. Nope, Chuckles said. His emotionless face betrayed little. He exhaled through his nostrils in jittery streams. He gestured to the bare walls. Was that what did this? Jay nodded. The chemist was as pale as the lab coat he wore beneath his chem suit. To Mike, he looked like he'd aged a century since Friday afternoon. Had to be. He swung his eyes to Kate's. Yeah? She nodded and looked at Mike. That's what we were trying to tell you. Mike shook his head. That thing came out of the goddamn barrel of oil? It's not oil, Kate said. I don't know what it is. We have no clue. She looked at Neil. 
What do you think? The biochemist grimaced between sharp breaths. Chuckles, give me a damn cigarette. Chuckles raised his eyebrows but said nothing. He pulled out the pack and handed it to Neil. Neil's shaking hands popped open the pack and slid one out between his fingers. He put it between his lips. The flick of the lighter wheel echoed in the hallway. A teardrop flame appeared in front of Neil's face. He dipped the cigarette into the flame, took a deep drag, and coughed. Bill laughed. Been too long for you, Neil. Neil choked back another cough and then dragged again. He held the smoke in his lungs for a moment and then blew out a cloud. Yep, that's just what I needed. After a panicked run up the stairs? Are you out of your mind? Kate asked. Neil laughed. When you've seen a goddamned oil monster, all bets are off. Knock it off, Mike said. What do you think, Neil? What the hell is it? The biochemist shrugged. I don't know, but I think we need to get somewhere safe. The new knock, Chuckles said. That's my vote. Just grab a damned parka first. How long until the sun comes up? Mike asked. A few hours, Jay said, although the goddamn clouds are going to make it a bit dim. Mom, Maeve asked. I want to go home. Chuckles' phone made a klaxon sound. The tech pulled it out of his pocket and stared at the message. Okay, Mike, you have a decision to make. What's that? Mike asked. Cigarette between his lips, Chuckles breathed deeply. He blew the cloud of smoke to the ceiling. The old knock might be on fire in a few minutes, and if that happens, we have to rely on the Hallen system. And there's no telling if that fucking thing damaged it. Let it burn, Neil said. Maybe then the goddamned assholes outside will get us the hell out of here. Don't bet on it, Dr. Hoyt said. They'll let this place burn and be thankful for it. Bill shook his head. No, 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 they won't. Why would they let... Code red, Mr. Field. It means we are expendable in order to keep an unknown biological infection from spreading. Hoyt bit her lip. And I can't say I blame them. Mommy, I want to go, Maeve yelled. Kate cooed in her daughter's ear and then looked at Mike. I'm taking my daughter to the new knock, now. She turned and started through the sky bridge. Kate, wait. She didn't turn. Mike shook his head. God damn it. Okay, Chuckles, we need to turn off the security so we can move around. Get to the new knock and get that done. Chuckles dropped his cigarette to the floor and crushed it beneath his shoe. I could do that in the old knock, too. And I could just yank the goddamn plug on the server room, keep us from getting a fire in there. Okay, move it. Chuckles saluted and then ran down the hallway. Mike watched him go and then turned to the others. All right, let's go. We need to get to the knock. Bill and Neil left the hallway and headed across the sky bridge. Dr. Hoyt shook her head. We are still going to be trapped in a small space. There won't be anywhere to run. Mike nodded. Yup. Got any better ideas? The CDC doctor thought for a moment. No, no I don't. But how long can we stay in there? Until we freeze to death. Mike's smile looked like a sneer. His heart thumped in his chest. Another cigarette was already between his lips. A trail of smoke followed his quick steps down the hall. The comforting voices of the group had dissipated, leaving him alone with only the sounds of the building's labored heating system and rain pelting the exterior. It wasn't until he was inside of the door to the old knock that the fear actually hit him. His mind filled with what he'd seen. The black fluid coalescing. The strange thing rising out of its center. The impossibly dark orb that seemed to stare at him. He shivered hard enough to grind his teeth. He'd noticed that the other CDC member, was his name Glaze? Wasn't in the hallway a few minutes ago. Had that, that thing eaten him? Chuckles walked to the door and held his hand against its surface. The steel-reinforced door was warm, but not hot. No fire, yet. He swiped his card across the reader and it beeped. He crushed out his cigarette, exhaled, and then swung open the door. The usual blast of chill air was absent. Instead, it was a scorching desert wind. His face immediately flushed. After the cold of the hallways, the warmth was refreshing for about 15 seconds. He closed the door and hit the overhead lights. The sudden and intense illumination pounded his retinas, and for a moment, all he saw was the afterimage of their glare. 
He closed his eyes and waited. When the bright flash faded into a dim glow, he opened his eyes. His mouth fell open. The server room was an absolute disaster. The heavy plastic stand-up supply closet was gone. Just gone. The only thing that remained of it was piles of metal computer parts. Melted circuit boards, prongs from chips, exposed copper wire, and dozens of other parts he couldn't even identify were strewn across the floor. The ceiling tiles were all but vaporized. The shining, naked metal supports jutted out into space with nothing holding them. The light fixtures had mostly escaped unharmed, but bundles of fried network cables hung in a heap from the ceiling. His computer desk was gone except for skeletal metal bands. The monitor had crashed to the floor. All the plastic from the display, his workstation, and everywhere else in the room had been vaporized. So much for turning off the security, he said to the empty room. Chuckles blinked at the mess. Light shined off the floor. He'd never seen it so clean. A mad laugh escaped his mouth and then stopped as he turned to the server racks. The metal was still intact. The plastic clips holding the shelves in place were gone, but none of the old machines had slid out of the racks. The air conditioning units were dead. The power cables had shorted out after the plastic and rubber surrounding them disappeared, or dissolved, or whatever the goddamn thing did. The eye stalk entered his mind again. His spine crawled with imaginary legs. Chuckles shook away the image, but the sensation stayed. He looked at the control box on the wall. The thing had eaten just about every other goddamn piece of plastic or rubber in the room, but the breaker box was encased in steel. He grinned at it and then pulled it open. The relatively new switches stared back at him. Before they were able to put all the servers in the room, Hal had an electrician in to reroute some cabling and bulk up the breakers. Chuckles stared at the big red handle. It was locked in the on position. He reached out and put his fingers on it. He took a deep breath, said a silent prayer, and then flipped it in the other direction. The servers died, and the lights went out. The fans and the myriad of raid arrays slowly spun down, leaving the room in utter silence. Chuckles took another deep breath and then reached for the flashlight in his pocket. He turned it on. The halogen beam ripped through the complete darkness. He turned back toward the door to get back to the hallway and stopped in his tracks. That sizzling sound, that smell of cooking rancid meat. It was back. He shined the light at the door. It was still intact. A sinking feeling hit his stomach. He knew where it was now. The only question was if it would let him reach the door. He slowly raised the light to the ceiling over the doorway. The tiles were gone and exposed pipes shined back at him. Chuckles slowly walked to the door. He heard something creak at the back of the room but ignored it. If it was, well, that thing, he was pretty well fucked anyway. He was more afraid of the damned thing ambushing him as he tried to get out. Step. Step, step. He was just a foot from the door. Just one more step and something sizzled. Chuckles spun around. The cone of bright light danced in his hands. A piece of metal fell from the ceiling and crashed to the floor. He shined the light upward and saw it. The creature was wrapped around the pipes. It had eaten through the supports holding one of the light fixtures. A curl of smoke rose from its liquid form where his light stabbed it. He stepped backward, but kept the light focused on it. The creature didn't make a sound. It contracted and then slithered away from the light. He adjusted his aim and kept hitting the black form. It slithered further and further away until the light no longer reflected off its surface. Without changing his aim, he felt for the door handle with his free hand. He found it, grinned, and swiveled it. The lock clicked. Chuckles gently pushed and heard the welcome drone of the heater in the hallway. A sliver of ambient light filtered through the crack in the door. He pushed harder and slowly walked backward. He crossed the threshold into the hall. Something crashed down from the ceiling in the room's far corner. Chuckles slammed the door, turned, and ran. The fluorescent lights that still worked came on as he pelted down the hallway. The hall echoed with the sounds of sizzling. He turned around, but kept walking backwards. The door to the old knock hung off one hinge. A cube of black moved through the doorway. Fucking douchebag, Chuckles yelled. Can't dissolve it so you just knock it over? An eye stalk sprouted from the middle of the moving black shape. 
as it squeezed through the space, legs, tentacles, and more eye stalks pushed out of its surface. Chuckles gulped. It was between him and the sky bridge. God damn it, how did he take a wrong turn? He laughed in the hallway and was surprised at how insane he sounded. He turned back around and resumed running. It was giving chase. He knew it was. Have to shut off the security, he reminded himself. But how the hell was he going to do that without a network? With the old knockdown, there was no Wi-Fi, no internet backbone, nothing. He needed a terminal. He needed something he could log in via VPN and get it done. What he needed, Chuckles took the next left and then headed into Building One's main conference room. The automatic lights came on. He cursed and killed the switch. Chuckles gently closed the door and locked it. He didn't know if the thing could hear, but he had to take the chance. As fast as he could, he ran to the other side of the table and dropped to the floor. The heavy table was supported by a wooden cylinder on either end. Chuckles scrunched into the fetal position and held his breath. The conference room's west wall, made of translucent glass, faced the hallway. He didn't know if the creature was smart enough to actually look for him, but he wasn't taking any chances. Chuckles closed his eyes and held his breath. He focused, and then he heard it, the click of taloned feet on the exposed concrete floor. Even through the glass wall, he could smell it too. Except for the click of its feet, the creature was completely silent. Knock, knock, scratch. As silently and slowly as he could, he exhaled and then sipped a long breath. Knock, scratch, knock. It was at the door and trying to get in. He silently cursed. He wanted to look. God, how he wanted to look. Was it there outside the glass? Eye stalks waving and trying to catch a glimpse of its prey? Did it know he was even in here? The sounds stopped. Bolts of pain rose up his spine and he grimaced. He couldn't hold the position for long, but damn it, he wasn't stretching until he was sure that thing was gone. Time crawled. He tried to keep track of the seconds, but lost count. Finally, blessedly, he stretched out his legs and straightened his back. He reached into his pocket and pulled out his phone. It had plenty of battery, plenty of signal. Thank God he wasn't in the damned labs. He'd have no network, no cell, nothing. Shit, not even a landline. Chuckles grinned at the phone. A few taps and he turned the phone into a Wi-Fi hotspot. If Mike had let him choose the right goddamn VPN provider, he could have done this shit on the device. He exhaled another breath and then peered around the cylinder. There was nothing on the other side of the glass. The lights in the hallway had already gone dark. Chuckles sighed and finally realized how fast his heart had been beating. He inhaled and exhaled slowly through his nose. The thumping in his ears subsided. When he thought he could breathe normally again, he pulled himself to a crouch. The workstation was at the end of the conference room. He checked the angle from the glass. Unless someone was standing adjacent to the door and looking in exactly the right direction, he'd be hidden. 45 seconds, he told himself. That's all you need. As he duck walked to the workstation stand, he went over the steps in his mind. He reached the end of the table and stopped. He checked his phone one more time. The hotspot was live. When he reached the machine, he'd have to select the Wi-Fi, type in his password, and use the web browser to log into the virtual private network. The VPN was the one damned piece of technology he'd already clustered into the new knock. He clenched his free fist. He just hoped the connections from the knock could talk to the building's security system. If not, they were screwed. He raised his head over the table just high enough to look at the door one last time. The lights in the hall were still off. Wherever it had gone, it wasn't there, and that's all that mattered. Standing up was a bad idea. He knew it, and he sure as shit wasn't going to do it. He duck walked past the table and to the workstation. With every step, he was closer to the pulsing How logo on the screen. He swung his head back to the door. The lights were still off. Chuckles grinned and gently pressed the space bar on the keyboard. The How logo melted into a login screen. He typed in his username and password and waited. The system thought for a few seconds and then flashed an error message. Unable to authenticate. Just fucking awesome, Chuckles whispered. Without the network, the computer couldn't contact the authentication server to look up his credentials. 
He typed in the root password. The login screen disappeared and dropped him to the maintenance interface. A few clicks and he added the computer to his Wi-Fi hotspot. Seconds later, he was logged into the VPN and bringing up the security system UI. While he waited, he snuck another look around. The lights in the hallway were on. His breath caught in his throat. As he watched, the lights flicked off. He blew out a sigh and focused on the terminal. He navigated to the security software. As fast as he could, he killed the card readers in the labs, the loading dock, and the readers on the second floor. That would allow everyone access to Building 1 without restriction. Building 2? That was trickier. With the switchover half done, the software could only access the main offices and not the lower floor or the new knock. Chuckles brushed a sheen of sweat away from his forehead, readjusted his cap, and pulled out a cigarette. He lit it and checked the window again. Nothing there. Lights off. Everything good. He opened a terminal, typed in his credentials, and started grepping the security processes for the floor. The new building's software was radically different than the old. It took him a few minutes to find them. He stared at the process responsibility list. The new knock and its Hallen system were controlled by the same goddamned thread. Killing the knock's security access would take out its fire system, too. Chuckles scowled at the screen. If they made it out of this, he'd have to change that right after he strangled the tech who set it up that way. Something creaked in the ceiling. Chuckles looked up in the darkened room but saw nothing. He went back to the screen. The first floor of Building 2 wasn't even open yet. The fire doors worked, but that was about it. With a few keystrokes, he eliminated the card readers in the new building. His phone buzzed. He swung his eyes over and looked at it. The system had sent him several texts saying security was offline. That was fine. He brought up the demon list once more and double-checked it. If he forgot anything, they'd all be... Chuckles stopped in mid-exhale. A small stream of smoke crawled from his nostrils. Something was sizzling, and even through the acrid taste and smell of tobacco, that sweet and sour stench of cooked, rotted meat stung his nostrils. The sizzling was louder. He looked at the terminal one more time to make sure everything was off. It was. He turned around and froze. The ceiling at the far end of the room was melting. A large, thick column of black ooze slowly drained from the ceiling onto the carpeted floor. As slowly as he could, he inched his hand toward the flashlight still in his pocket. It wasn't there. His eyebrows rose and he frantically searched the room with his eyes. There it was, by the table. Must have slid out of his pants when he was curled up like a baby. He flung the cigarette to the floor and dove for the flashlight. Chuckles grabbed the light and rolled to the right. His finger clicked the button, and he shined it at the wall. The column of black was already spreading. Two eye stalks stared at him beneath the halogen's glare. Curls of smoke rose from where the light touched it. The creature moved to the right. Chuckles followed it with the light. Dark curls of foul-smelling smoke belched from the eye stalks. Burning particles danced in the air before dropping to the floor. The eye stalks crackled and retracted into the mass. At the same time, a smaller eye stalk rose from the center of the amorphous shape. Chuckles slowly backed up. He didn't dare take his eyes off the thing and kept the flashlight pointed at the new eye stalk. Acrid smoke curled from the appendage. The tall black blob jiggled and then shifted to the wall. He saw the door out of the corner of his eye. The lights in the hallway were still off, but that didn't matter. He had to get the hell out of the room. The halogen seemed to keep it from rushing forward, but the beam wasn't powerful enough to really hurt it. What asshole suggested this would work? When he felt he was far enough from the table, he shuffled sideways. His left foot connected with the leg of a chair. He cursed and slowly retracted his foot. The blob was still jiggling, smoke continuing to rise from the appendage. He rounded the table and cursed again as one of his feet hit the end of a power cord. God damned conference room douches always dicking with the cables. With each step, the cone of light was more faint against the impossibly black shape. The smoke had damned near ceased. The thing crackled and a leg appeared. Then two more. The creature expanded. Hooked tentacles popped out of its middle. More eye stalks appeared. He ran to the door, swung it open, and pelted down the hallway. From behind him, he heard a crash tumbling metal, and the sizzle of it melting through something. 
Chuckles rounded the corner and sprinted to the sky bridge. Just had to get to the new building. Just had to get there. The next corner would lead him to the sky bridge. Lungs burning, Chuckles sprinted. He reached the corner, turned, and then screamed. The thing stood before the sky bridge, a wall's worth of rubble behind it. It was goddamned huge. Its bulk of tentacles, mouths, legs, and eye stalks filled the entire hallway. He stumbled to a stop. One of the mouths flashed its black fangs. He pulled up the flashlight and pointed it at the thing while he backed away. Smoke belched upward. It backed off a step, but the tentacles seemed to be getting longer. Chuckles' heart raced in his chest and his mouth filled with the taste of bile. The creature had backed off enough to show a narrow sliver of the sky bridge entrance. Chuckles took a step forward, the flashlight alternating between the eye stalks. The creature backed off a bit more. He sneered at it. Don't like the light after all, do you? He said to it. The creature responded by growing two more mouths. The eye stalks bent toward him. The incredibly black orbs at the end glared at him. He could feel the hunger in them. Chuckles took another step forward. More smoke belched upward. He jumped as a klaxon alarm started up. Water sprayed down from the ceiling and the hall became a dizzying kaleidoscope of crimson and blue-white light. The rain from the sprinklers washed over the creature and the rest of the hallway. The water streaked across his glasses and he could barely see through them. The creature's mouths grinned. Either that or it was the drops of water skewing his sight. Either way, the damned thing seemed to be laughing. Chuckles aimed the light at the end of one of the eye stalks. The orb burst into flame and was immediately doused by the sprinklers. Chuckles gritted his teeth. God damn it! He took another step forward and immediately regretted it. The creature's tentacles had been growing, but he'd been too distracted to realize it. One of them flung outwards and smashed the hand holding the flashlight. The snap of his broken wrist was punctuated by the light flying into the wall where it shattered. The halogen light went out. He screamed and held his ruined hand. The creature pulled back its tentacles. They thumped on the floor in an alien rhythm. Chuckles backed away. The thing walked forward on its legs, its talons clicking on the concrete as the sprinkler system continued its incessant shower. You piece of shit, Chuckles screamed at it. The thing pressed forward. Dozens of tentacles streamed out of its midsection. They lengthened and lengthened until they were behind him. Chuckles, still cradling his wrist, grinned at the thing through the pain. I hope you get a fucking sunburn. He barely felt the pain when the hooks smashed into his back. But he was conscious enough to scream as three of the mouths crunched down on his head and shoulders.